What's up today guys? Today we're going to be addressing the flex plate issue on the 534 L80. It still has the dish flex plate from the 4L60 with a spacer and nothing was ever quite right. It always seemed to have a vibration. Then come to find out there's only one bolt holding the bell housing onto the block. So I went ahead and I purchased a 4L80 uh, flex plate. Comes with the spacers, bolt, flex plate, so that way we're not having to wallow out holes on the 4L60 flex plate to get the uh, torque converter bolts to mount up. So we're gonna get that knocked out today, make sure the starter's lined up, everything like that. We'll get the uh, flex plate torqued down. I think it's a three-step process. You start out at 15 pounds, 37 pounds, and finish torquing at 74 pounds. We'll be using red Loctite, so that way they won't back out on us. And that should be it. I'll also be using that flex plate stop that I have that we used on the harmonic balancer, so that way we can get proper torque without the crank turning over on us. We only have about 85 subs left before we hit the 500 subscribers. So you need to get in there and get on that giveaway if you haven't already. Put the box up here. For that video, there would be one at the end of the video as well. Check that out if you haven't. And uh, click the box in the bottom right hand corner. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. And we'll get to it. The new 4L80 flex plate is on the left. The 4L60 dished flex plate is on the right. The 4L80 is a flat flex plate versus the dished 4L60. The spacer is already hammered in there. This is the engine side. That's engine side as well. They had, they had a spacer on it as well. It was on the uh, transmission side. I don't know if that was affecting it any but it always seemed to have a vibration. You can see where they kind of took like a die grinder to the hole or at least one of the holes. This one has all six. So basically the spacer just goes on the snout of the torque converter. As you can see, all our holes now line up. Get some torque converter bolts. Hopefully we won't have any issues. But it also, the kit I bought came with flex plate, spacer, and the longer bolts to go onto the crank. So we're gonna go ahead, I'll get the tripod set up and we will do the install. All right guys, first thing we're gonna do is just gonna get our flex plate on there. It says engine side right here. So we'll go towards the engine. That spacer should fit on the crank. And then we will just start putting our bolts in. The bolts actually already have red Loctite on them. So we can just run them in. Now we're not gonna get these super tight. We're just gonna get them started and then we will torque them down in the three-step process. But hopefully this will solve our vibration issue in the trans. We're also gonna be resealing that after we get it cleaned up and painted. We're gonna get it cleaned up, resealed, and painted. So that way it'll match the engine. Not that that matters since it's under the truck, but if I'm going to do it, might as well do it all the way, right? All 
All right, guys, now that we got that tight, we're going to use our flex plate stop tool. Like I said, it just bolts in place of the starter. And basically the teeth just lock into the flex plate where it doesn't allow the crank to turn. So that way we can torque it down to the proper torque specs, kind of get it the way we want it. Make sure we're locked in to the teeth before we start uh, tightening down on it. All right. So the first pass is going to be 15 pound feet and we're just going to go in a star pattern. Well, basically you get the idea. Okay guys, so our second pass is going to be 37 pound feet and we'll just go in the same star pattern as last time. And then our third and final pass is going to be 74 pound feet. So we're just going to run our torque wrench on up to 70, 74. We'll just continue the same star pattern. Nice and slow so we don't go past our 74 pound feet. We'll just go around them one last time, making sure they are all torqued to 74 pound feet. Okay, now that our flex plate is installed, we can remove our flex plate stopping tool and then we can install our starter. We're gonna go ahead and install our starter. I did install a little bit of blue Loctite onto the starter bolts. I just don't want any issues with them coming loose in the future. We are gonna be using the GM recommended torque spec on this as well. I know I'm kind of a Stickler for torque specs, which they may not be needed, but I mean, usually tight is probably good enough for these. But I've got them, I've got a torque wrench. I might as well go ahead and use them, right? I'm just gonna run it snug up to the block. on both bolts.
All right, they're both pretty well snug. I've already set the torque wrench to the 37 pound feet we need. We're gonna go ahead and torque both. They are a 13 millimeter head size. I didn't decide, I didn't go with ARP on these ones, uh, mainly because I'm cheap and I already spent all my money on all the other ARP hardware. Sorry about how bright that is, guys. I was trying to give you all a little better view with the block being black. Well, guys, that's all it takes to install the 4L80E flex plate onto a 4.8 or a 5.3. I'm pretty sure this flex plate would even work for the 6.0s with the shortened crank. I think the 99 to 2000s 6.0s and 4.8s had the longer crank where you didn't need the spacer. But with this being a short crank, you do. So, if you enjoyed the video, guys, like, comment, subscribe, share. We'll catch you on the next one.